Hey everyone, welcome and happy Easter. Uh, we're so glad that you joined us tonight. Uh, as we get ready to celebrate Easter this weekend, I wanted to do a standalone message to help you as a middle and high school student get some perspective on the importance of what this weekend means. You see, to some people, the Easter season is all about candy and bunnies and colorful eggs. Now, don't get me wrong, Easter is a time of joy and celebration, but that's not the whole story. Because before we can celebrate the joy of Jesus' victory, what he did on the cross, we have to first remember the pain of Jesus' suffering. So let's take a look at what led up to the Easter story. And with that said, the title of tonight's talk is called Worth It. Like I said before, I can't believe that Easter is this weekend. When I was growing up, I, I didn't have any Easter traditions, but I'm sure many of you did. Now, maybe for you, it was a time when you and your family got together over a big meal, and then the kids went outside to find eggs filled with candy in the backyard. Or maybe for you, it was that big Easter egg hunt that your church put on every year that you looked forward to. Now, regardless of what your tradition was, this is a time of celebration, especially if you are a follower of Jesus. The reality is that for many of us, we don't feel like celebrating, do we? Because of what's going on in the world and in the lives of our friends, and family. You know, just last week, I was reading a post on, on Facebook from a, an old high school friend who I haven't spoke to in about 20 years. And just a few weeks ago, she posted that her father ended up getting the COVID virus and, is, and he's fighting for his life. And just this past weekend, she posted again that her father lost the fight with this virus and he ended up passing away. And I posted uh, that I'm, you know, I'm praying for you and I'm praying for your family. And you see, I, I knew this family really well. Now, even though my heart was broken for this family, I never lost a loved one. So I can't imagine what this family is going through right now. Because it's, it's one thing to say that I'm, I'm praying for you and, and I feel you know, sympathetic. But it's another thing to say, I know exactly what you're going through because I lost some, somebody, because I went through the same thing. But where am I going with that? Listen, when you have to endure something awful, I've always found it that, that comfort is more powerful when it comes from someone who knows what it's like. Now, I don't know what kind of difficulty you've experienced this year as a middle or, or high school student. Maybe the most difficult thing you've experienced was a, a, a tough soccer practice or a broken arm or trying to eat an extra spicy chicken wing. But maybe you've been walking through something much more difficult than that, like rejection. Or maybe during the season, you know, stress and anxiety, disappointment, maybe even sickness or loss for you or a, a friend or a family member. Or maybe the tough things you're, you're going through are, are pretty ordinary, but still exhausting, like trying to navigate through friend drama or get your grades up, especially because you're doing school online right now. You see, when we're experiencing something difficult, Sometimes the thing we need most is comfort from someone who understands what you're going through. So right now you may be saying, well, I get that and I understand that, Pastor G, but what, is this, what does that have to do with me? I'm glad you asked. You see, when life gets tough, it's easy to feel alone, like we're the only ones who've, who ever, who've ever experienced what we're experiencing and that no one else can possibly understand. Now, even though people tell us that God is with us, it can still feel like we're going through life all alone when your friends turn their back on you, or when you don't make the team or 
pass the test or get the job or win the award or when someone says something hurtful to you on social media or your family may be even struggling financially right now. When life is difficult, we may even wonder and ask questions like, like why would God let this happen? Or should I, should I just give up? Should I just give up my faith in Jesus? And here's the million dollar question. Is this all worth it? Is faith in Jesus worth it? Now this may come as, as a surprise, but even Jesus understands what it's like to ask questions like these. If you've been around church before, You've probably heard that Jesus you know, died and then rose again uh, from the dead a few days later. Now, that's what we celebrate every Easter Sunday. That's what we're getting ready to celebrate this weekend. But before we, we get into that, in, into that talk about what happened after Jesus died, you know, his resurrection, what I wanna talk about tonight, uh, what, what, let's, let's talk tonight about what happened before because I think Jesus has something to show us about suffering. So if you have a Bible, I would love for you to, to join me in Matthew chapter 26 in the New Testament, as we actually take a look at some of the things that Jesus went through. So Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 36 says this, and this is Jesus speaking. It says, then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, and just to give you some context, this is a story that happened right before Jesus gets arrested and goes to the cross. So then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to his disciples, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Listen to Jesus's anguish. Listen to Jesus's language, uh, language during this time. Verse 39, going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed to God, and he said, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Talking about going to the cross and dying. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Now we don't have time to go into the entire chapter, but in this one chapter, Jesus experienced more suffering than most of us can ever imagine. He said goodbye to his friends. He was plotted against by the religious leaders. He was let down by everyone he loved. His disciples just ran away. He was arrested. He was taken to trial, sentenced to death, spit on, beaten, and betrayed by two close friends. Now we may think or, or imagine that, that Jesus' walk towards death was a, was a time of just complete peace and composure, right? We think because he was God, he must have just had peace and composure walking to the cross. But the account of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane tells a different story. The biblical accounts of this moment says that Jesus was overwhelmed in anguish and exhausted because he knew exactly what was about to happen to him on the cross. They even tell us that Jesus' sweat turned into blood, a, a medical condition that's been proven that can happen under extreme stress. In the final hours before Jesus' death, we could see him asking a question like this, God, is there any other way? And listen, and if I were Jesus, I'd be asking another question too. A question like this, God, is, is this whole thing worth it? Like, like, God, these people who betrayed me, have forgotten about me, humiliated me, hurt me, and want to kill me, are they really worth the pain? And listen, if I could be honest with you, if I were Jesus, you know what my answer would be? No, 
because when someone hurts me, like I don't want anything to do with them. And now, now not only did Jesus suffer, but many people in the first century suffered because of their faith in Jesus. You, you see, the Roman government was threatened by Jesus' teachings and the movement that he began, which meant his followers endured all kinds of suffering and oppression. Now, naturally, this made followers of Jesus wonder, is this Jesus thing really worth it? Because many of Jesus' early followers were Jewish. Now, while they were raised to follow the laws in the Old Testament and beliefs of, Judy, uh, of Judaism, they put their trust in Jesus and began to follow him. But in the face of persecution and opposition and even imprisonment, many of these Jewish followers of Jesus considered going back to their old ways and, and thinking, man, is this Jesus thing really worth it? Now that's where the book of Hebrews comes in. Hebrews was written as a letter to encourage these early Jewish followers of Jesus who weren't sure of, that all their pain and suffering was worth it. Now the author tells us that these followers of Jesus, or the, the author tells these followers of Jesus to stay strong, listen, don't give up, don't drift away, and to remember that Jesus understands what it feels like to suffer. And so I wanna show you what the writer of Hebrew says to encourage these, Christ, uh, these Christians. So we're gonna to go to the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter two, and starting at verse nine, the writer says this to these early Christian followers who've been, again, imprisoned, oppressed, persecuted for their belief in Jesus. And he says this to them about Jesus. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he, and here it is, because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Skipping down to verse 17, it says, for this reason, Jesus had to be made like his brothers in every way, talking about me and you, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest. And we'll talk about what that means in a second. In service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. And here it is, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Now skipping down to chapter four, verse 14, it says this, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses and with our struggles, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. Now check the last verse out, verse 16. It says, so because of that, because of what Jesus suffered, because he's able to relate with us as a human, it says, let us then approach the throne room of grace with confidence so that we, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The writer says that Jesus is our great high priest. And this was a Jewish concept that their readers would have understood well. You see, in Judaism, a high priest was someone who made sacrifices to God uh, when people messed up. Uh, the high priest helped people connect with God. He would pray to God on people's behalf. But the writer of Hebrews says that, that Jesus is our new high priest. You see, he didn't make sacrifices for us. He became the sacrifice on our behalf. On our behalf. He gave up his own life to make a way for us to connect with God the Father now and forever. And now Jesus represents us before God the Father. So to these Jewish Jesus followers, 
who understood the importance of a high priest, this was a pretty convincing argument about why they should believe in Jesus. But here's the interesting thing. These, uh, these Jesus followers weren't struggling because they need to be convinced or they needed to be convinced that Jesus was God. They, they believed that. But what they needed help with was the point where they were at in their life. You see, their life got hard. They didn't just need a convincing argument. They needed comfort in the midst of suffering. So the writer of Hebrews pointed them back to Jesus, their savior who suffered. Now the writer of Hebrews reminded them that Jesus understands what it's like to have a close friend who, who turns their, their back on you, to, to feel uh, like everyone you know, hates you or to lose someone you, you love or to be tempted to do what you know is wrong or to be rejected or, or to be hurt so much that it makes you question God. You see, the writer of Hebrews told the early followers of Jesus, and I believe the writer's even telling us to, uh, this to us now in our season of struggle, to hang on and to remember that Jesus knows what it's like to suffer and know that Jesus is with us in whatever difficulty we face. Now, with all that said, let me get to the point of this, of this talk. Let me get to the bottom line. You see, we've already said that comfort matters when it comes from someone who understands what we're going through. Now, if that's true, then Jesus can understand and comfort us better than anyone because he understands suffering better than anyone. You see, when life gets hard, one of the reasons we can hold firmly to Jesus is because he understands exactly what we're going through. And he is with us every step of the way. So here's the million dollar question you have to ask yourself. So is it worth it? Is following Jesus worth it? When Jesus stared death, torture, and humiliation in the face, he decided to say yes to that. He decided to say, you were worth it. The pain uh, and the struggle of the cross were worth it because he had you on his mind. And if following Jesus ever gets hard or exhausting, and, and there's gonna be times when it will, the author of Hebrews reminds us, and he would also say, that Jesus is worth following. You see, life isn't easy. And following Jesus isn't easy sometimes. There might be days when you wanna give up, but on those days, I hope you remember that God is with you and that he understands you because, and here's the bottom line, because the Jesus who suffered, suffers with you. And so that's what I want you to remember this week. That's what I want you to remember as we go into the Easter season. If you, don't, if you didn't hear anything else from this message, I want you to remember that one line. The Jesus who suffered, suffers with you. Now I would love to give you just some next steps to kind of think about during this time, during this weekend. You see, this Friday is, is Good Friday. And Good Friday is the day we remember the suffering that Jesus endured on our behalf. It's a day of, of grief, but it's also a day of comfort if we remember that we are loved by a God who doesn't just understand our pain in theory, but in experience. Listen, it doesn't matter how extreme your suffering is or isn't, Jesus understands whether it's a tough class that you're having to face right now online, a difficult relationship, or something much more painful. Jesus understands, not just in theory, but listen, in experience. He's not just a God in the cosmos who created us and then just said, peace out, take care of yourself. No, he has been there. So when life gets hard, 
There are three ways Good Friday reminds me that Jesus understands me. And so if you're taking mental notes or if you wanna jot these down, here's number one. Good Friday reminds us we're not alone. Because Jesus suffered so deeply, there is no suffering we can face that he can't understand. Number two, Good Friday reminds us that we can go to God with our suffering. No matter how big or small your suffering is, we can go to God with boldness. That's what the writer of Hebrews said. We can go through the throne, we can go to the throne room of grace. And we can tell God what happened. Tell him how you feel and even be honest with the questions that you have. And lastly, number three, Good Friday reminds us to comfort others. How important is that right now, especially with what we're going through? When we reflect on the ways Jesus suffered, it should make us more compassionate and concerned about the suffering of others. Good Friday should be a time when you ask God to help you be a comfort to those who are hurting around you. And so I want you to lean into this, this last few sentences before we close. Sometimes experiencing pain and suffering can make us feel far from God. But what if we decided to see pain and suffering as a way to actually get closer to God? What if everything hard we face is an opportunity to know Jesus better? Listen, are, are you disappointed? Are you stressed out? Are you fearful? Are you lonely? Are you hurting? Jesus knows what that's like. And what if instead of asking God, why did you let this happen to me? What if instead you ask Jesus, when did you feel this way? So as we close, I wanna close this message a little bit differently. At the end of this video, we have some students who sent some videos in to help us worship with them. And so I want you to take some time uh, in these next few moments after the video to worship with us as we get ready to prepare our hearts for Easter this weekend. But I also want you to spend a few minutes thanking Jesus the suffering he endured on our behalf, thanking him for deciding that you were worth it. Say, thank, say things like, thank you, Jesus, for taking all the pain, taking death and all the suffering for me. Tell him about the ways you're suffering and ask him to help you know him through the pain. Also ask him how you can help others in the middle of their suffering. How can you help them feel less alone in their pain during this time? Would you pray those things? Would you take maybe five or 10 minutes and pray those things after the video? And again, as we close, this Good Friday, I hope you remember that we can't always avoid pain, but there is a real person who understands. Jesus knows how you feel and his heart breaks when yours is breaking. And sometimes there is no greater comfort in the midst of pain than to know that somebody else gets it. So isn't it incredible to know that, G that the Jesus who suffered, suffers with you. And on Good Friday, that truly is good news. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Sing ha